So not only do I get to work inside concrete floor, but he's got bus lifts. Check these things out. So we're within the weight limits of it. And we just got it weighed so we know that for a fact. Sorry about that. So we've got that under the drive tire. Got the matching one over here on this side. We gotta watch our height. We don't wanna go up and Hit the ceiling there, and then he's got a controller for it with two paddles up and down each side, so you can go as you go. Really cool. I need 200 psi here. I don't have that. How did I do that? Got the hose across. <laughs> It'll work just fine like that, but yeah. I just assume you don't I'm want the steering backwards. <laughs> oh, I know how I did it. I did it from the, yeah, from the back side. Kelly's spotting for us on the ladder. Plenty high. I mean, that's more than high. How much here we got up there still? Oh, there's a ton up here. Like a foot at least, probably, right? Or more? A couple feet at least. Yeah. All right, the, the next stop will be four inches higher. You want to go another four or two? No, we're, we're good there. Yeah. So All does right, that I'm side on. need to come down a little bit over there? Yeah. Okay. Four by four. Uh, four by four, right? Yeah, or a few of them. So we put a pin in it, so. We're under the 8V92TA. We're dropping the oil pans. We've drained the oil out of it already. Uh, we're moving all the bolts here. Coming around. Take the oil pan down. We're gonna do our bearing inspection. We're gonna inspect main bearings, rod bearings. Um, just something we need to do on these 92 series because that's the weak link to them. And we've got about 150,000 miles, I think is what we've got, which is, seems really low, but it, let's just do the inspection on it. A couple hours worth of labor. It's well worth knowing the condition of everything. Better. So 
here's our inspection of two of the main bearings on there, and you can see the wear. Since we have it apart, we're going to go ahead and replace rod bearings as well. This is the upper, which takes the abuse just on one cylinder. Um, these both needed to be loosened in order to take the um, stiffeners off. So I'm not going to remove any more until we start place, replacing things back on, but we can go ahead and start ordering now. But I mean, you can see there's significant wear. I mean, it's not to the point where they were worn out, but they've had some stuff go through them and they are definitely worn. Hitting 150,000 miles. 8V92TA. We're changing the Raycor filter here, so we put a new filter in. We drained the sump. There's a sump on the bottom. When I first pulled it out, nothing came out. It was plugged up with that goo that's down there. So I was able to flush it out there, and then the filter itself is pretty dirty. black that's for sure so uh, and then when you replace that there's a little o-ring that gets replaced here that goes on that which holds down the lid and then this o-ring goes around there and when you make sure you lubricate those before you put them on okay we replaced the transmission filter filled it with transcend before we put it on there which is what's in there and the old one had a marking on it of 2013 22 of 13 since 2020 now, so that's seven, nearly seven years old. Definitely want to make sure you change your filters more often than that, even if it, you don't get the right mileage on them. The insides of them degrade, the rubber degrades, and they end up not filtering properly. Okay, Yeah, we need something for scale. Well, I guess the light switch shows you scale. <laughs> like you're walking from it. That's crazy. What year is this thing from, do you know? This machine would be from the early 70s or late 60s. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> How many kilowatts is it? It's, uh, I think it's 800 kW. 800 kW. I don't work on Cummins. <laughs> don't turn it back on. 